Hey, welcome back everybody. It is now June 25th of 2022 and just a couple of days ago we got the finale of the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV series that starred both Ewan McGregor and Hayden. And exactly what's to come in the future of the Star Wars franchise is what a lot of Star Wars fans are actually very skeptical about but at the same exact time very excited about because it's going to mainly be driven by Jon Favreau, Dave Filoni, and George Lucas moving ahead. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support. It is greatly appreciated. Now, one thing about Disney Star Wars right now is that they are developing a majority of Star Wars TV shows related to some of the well-known characters out there like Anakin, Ahsoka, Vader... Kenobi, of course, coming back in several ways. We'll talk about that a little bit later, as well as other characters like Din Jaren and more. Now, with that being said, all right, one thing that a lot of fans have been very unhappy about is exactly the treatment of the Kenobi TV series and how Kathleen Kennedy essentially dragged a lot of pieces of the Obi-Wan Kenobi movie scripts over to the Kenobi TV series. That's why you got a lot of trends of Kathleen Kennedy's leadership in the Kenobi show because a lot of strips of the actual script of the Kenobi movie made its way to the Kenobi show. So that's exactly why I believe, you know, there's portions of the show that are actually pretty good and there's portions of it that are pretty terrible in my opinion. Now, with that being said, everything related to Disney CEO Bob Chapek, this is the guy that's allowing both Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni to do as they please. With all of the new Star Wars TV shows arriving on Disney+, Plus. he is the guy that's allowing them to draw from Star Wars Legends and to essentially revive all of those old stories from the 1990s and the early 2000s as well. Now, on top of all of this, what's even all the more concerning has everything to do with Kathleen Kennedy and how she views a large portion of the fans and how she's calling the uproar over the Kenobi series, a minority, and more. Now, with that being said, with Kathleen Kennedy currently working on the Acolyte and Skeleton crew as her last two Star Wars TV shows that she has creative power over, she was eventually questioned about the fans' response to the Kenobi series and the backlash from the hardcore fans that are not happy with many decisions made in the show. Kathleen Kennedy went on to state the following to the fans, It's never a surprise to me that we see this kind of behavior from fans who think that they know better than the creators. And this is a kind of response from the small minority of fans that creates an even bigger problem with division between the community, which is something that we don't like to see. So you see, it's those fans that are the problem that cause the negativity and create a ripple effect or waves of ideas that they think were better than the creator's ideas itself. It's the fans' fault and reason as to why so much pressure is put upon like our writers and directors. I remember speaking to Joby Harold and said, are you sure you want to step on this project? Because it is a big responsibility and you are likely to get lots of feedback, both negative and positive, from fans. And he was brave and took the task to complete the series for all of us. Now, let me just stop right here for a second. Now, obviously, Joby Harold was not fit for the Kenobi show. I mentioned this several times. He actually even said a couple of days ago that he used both Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars as well as The Last Jedi as key references for the Kenobi series. And that's why you have a lot of trends of The Last Jedi here and there in the Kenobi show. I'm okay with the Rebels thing, but The Last Jedi drawing from that was a big mistake and something that nobody should have ever done. So... Of course, she goes on to say he didn't care about the upcoming fans that would say so much horrible things about our characters like Reva and others. When we, were, when we were doing The Force Awakens, we were also prepared for those type of fans to raise their voices. We were very ready and prepared for it all, and we just felt so bad about what John Boyega had to go through. Now, of course, you know, let me just pause right here for a second, because everything related to Kathleen Kennedy is that she's always casting blame on the fans for putting pressure on the creators. And I always say this time and time again, all the time, is that it's always perceived by Lucasfilm that when fans raise their opinions that it's just toxic behavior and negative behavior, where in reality it's just the most passionate fans are the loudest, at least in my belief. You know, it really is true. I mean, Star Wars means a lot to people, it's in people's blood, people grew up with it, you know, it's in their mind, and it really is something special to them. So. 
when you kind of really don't treat something fairly or with respect, that's when you get a lot of backlash. And to call this backlash of the Kenobi TV series a minority is insane. I don't know about you guys, but it really is going overboard by calling this a minority. This is the same exact kind of response that we got from Kathleen Kennedy with The Last Jedi, where fans were raising their voices over how they treated Luke, and she kept on pushing that it's just the minority of the fans that are raising their voices. And most fans, she said, actually love The Last Jedi, where in reality, it was just regular, casual viewers or moviegoers that liked the movie, not necessarily fans. See, You see, Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm at the time, even with the Kenobi series, are getting mixed up with all of that. So with that being said, she goes on to say, but in this case with Kenobi, I will never understand why we can't make that group of fans happy. These fans that raise their voices are the ones creating the problem rather than supporting Star Wars. And to me, it's just disgusting that this is what we get in response sometimes to putting out some of the greatest stories told that picks up George Lucas's vision. We could have quit midway through the Kenobi series or even back when it was going to be a movie, but we wanted to actually keep pushing for our goals to please the community and it just saddens us when we get such a wave of negativity all the time. I stand by my side that what we did with Kenobi was probably the best thing that we did and we produced. We really went above and beyond with the series. We used new techniques and new technology, new editing ways that brought things to a new level for production. The other things that I just need to bring up is that it was about the fans, it was never about the fans with this series really. We had to focus away from that burden to find ways to bring in new fans. It's why we love to create new characters like Reva, Roken, and Tala. We are very proud with what we did for Kenobi and I am currently looking over Acolyte and Skeleton Crew and we have some exciting things to explore in those two series that I am working very closely with the creators and crew. So let me just stop right here again for a moment is that Kathleen Kennedy is seriously once again putting blame on the fans and really pointing fingers at the fans raising their voices. Now I know Rotten Tomatoes is a terrible destination of reviews, either if it's positive or negative, sometimes it's over-exaggerated, but it gives you a baseline of how the fans are reacting. And if you go on Rotten Tomatoes for the Kenobi TV series, it's not looking all that hot. It really isn't all looking all that great. You know, if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, the last I checked, I think it stood at 61% on the tomato meter for the audience. All right, not for the critics, but for the audience. Now, of course, everything related to that, you know, you gotta sometimes take it with a grain of salt for Rotten Tomatoes, but in this case, it's pretty valid because even the critics on Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 67% score if you look at the average tomato meter and the audience are giving it 63. So it really does show you that Kathleen Kennedy will never admit some failures. She will never admit some mistakes until years later. Look how long it took her to finally bring up that making, making Solo a Star Wars story was a big mistake on their end. She actually admitted this uh, like maybe a month ago where she did that Vanity Fair interview. She flat out said that we shouldn't have done that. You know, maybe that's something that we shouldn't have done and maybe we should have never recast Han Solo. And it goes to show you that they don't really know what they're doing. They're really testing the waters. But John, George, and Dave, they do know what they're doing. And I think it's why The Mandalorian is favored already over the Kenobi TV series. It just saddens me a bit because the Kenobi show has its moments. I'm not going to say it's a flat out garbage series from start to finish consistently, consistently. It has great moments in the series, but as a show, it's an entirety. It's just really not all that well respected by the creators. So overall, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.